Hello everyone, welcome to this short lecture about delay in the Web Audio API, where today we'll be talking about and introducing the delay node. Now, the delay node is one of the simplest audio nodes available with the Web Audio API. All it does is pass the input audio stream to the output after some specified delay time. So if you want a delay node with five milliseconds of delay, the delay time specified in seconds is 0 0.005. <coughs> and this can be created just by specifying a, a node defined as new delay node for a given audio context and setting that parameter delay time to 0 0.005. Or you could also use context and the method create delay and then specify the delay time later on. So the two possible parameters here, there's the delay time which we've just discussed and optionally, rarely needed, is the maximum delay time, max delay time. And this is there because when you set a delay time, you're essentially creating a buffer so that you store samples all the way back to however far back in time is the delay, the maximum delay that you might want to work with. So if you're only working with short delay times, you may not need a very large buffer so you can decrease the maximum delay. Similarly, if you are going to be working with very long samples and, and delays far back into the past where you store a lot of information or you render the sound from a few minutes back, you might want to increase the maximum delay. So it's a very simple audio node. Most of the time you only set the delay time, but its uses are very, very powerful. And in the book, Working with the Web Audio API, we give four different examples showing some pretty cool things you can do with delay. Those include comb filtering, feedback delay, vibrato, and corporate strong algorithm. For the purpose of this short lecture though, we'll concentrate just on the first two of those methods, the comb filter and feedback delay. So the comb filter just sums some input signal with a delayed version of that input. It's not always used intentionally as an effect, it's often a problem. If you record uh, a musical instrument with two microphones, those two microphones can be different distances from the instrument. And so they will receive the sound produced by that instrument at different times. One might want to sum those two microphones together to get an interesting timbre, but if the signal arrives at different times, it's the same as summing the input signal with a delayed version of that input, and it produces the comb filter effect. So what is this effect? Well, supposing the source is producing a sine wave, and you add a delayed version of that sine wave, if the original sine wave and the delayed version are just one period different, then the peak sum at the peaks, the zero values summed together and so on, and you're just increasing the amplitude of that sine wave. But what if it's out of phase, uh, half a period different in time? So then the maximum value of the original sine wave will add together with the minimum value of the delayed version, and they will cancel out. And they do, in fact, cancel out everywhere. And so the combined signal would be silent. In many cases, you don't perfectly add the two together where they're equal in amplitude and also exactly half a period out of phase. But if you're at all close to that situation, this signal will experience significant attenuation. And if you look at things on a decibel scale, <coughs> when you add a signal to uh, a delayed version of that signal, which is um, almost in phase, you only get a few decibels of increase. But when they are almost completely out of phase, you can get 
complete cancellation or near complete cancellation and so you decrease the amplitude or the magnitude by many many decibels so comb filtering is often problematic it results in these notches in the spectrum um, at half a period one and a half periods um, two and a half periods and so on of delay essentially the magnitude response is zero at given frequencies that associate with one over two times the delay, three over two times the delay, five over, and so on, and so on. So if we delay a signal for just one millisecond, we can plug one millisecond into that formula and find that we will have notches in the frequency response, or the magnitude response, at 500 hertz, 1500 hertz, 2500 hertz. Because when the input is a sine wave at 500 hertz, then at um, the right values of delay, you will get the phase cancellation. And you can plug this in. Uh, if F equals 500 hertz, then you can find the delay values that will give you that cancellation. Similarly, if you put in a delay of one millisecond into that formula, then one over two milliseconds or one over 0.002 gives 500 hertz. And so you can find the delay for a given frequency of the notch and vice versa. Why is this called a comb filter? Well, in the figure I showed on the right, the frequency values for this magnitude spectrum are plotted on a logarithmic scale. But if I plot them on a linear scale, then I see that the frequencies where the magnitude response drops to zero are equally spaced. And it looks like a comb that you would use to comb your hair. And that's the shape of this magnitude response. So, how do we create this with the Web Audio API? Um, in HTML, we have a few lines to create a number control for the frequency and a number control for the delay. And we use number rather than range controls because I want to be able to illustrate that when you have just the right value of uh, frequency, and just the right value of delay, it cancels out completely. We create an audio context as our input is an oscillator, which we set initially to 440 hertz, and the delay we set initially to 5 milliseconds. We start the oscillator, we connect the oscillator to a delay, and both that delay and the oscillator we're calling tone connect to the destination. <coughs> so those two inputs add together at the destination. And we allow one to change these frequency and delay uh, number controls, which then immediately update the delay time and the, uh, for the delay node and the frequency for the oscillator. So jumping back one second, if delay is one millisecond, we see here that there should be a notch at 500 hertz. Let's remember that. Okay, what does this do? Let's see if we can get this up and running. Here we go. It's much too big.
and it works. It completely cancels out the signal due to the comb filtering. Okay, so that's the comb filter. What else can we do with uh, delay? Here's another example. Feedback delay. So this is when a signal or an audio stream gets delayed, but then that delayed signal gets attenuated using some gain less than one and fed back into the delay. And so we have a loop here in the middle and the signal gets attenuated, fed back, attenuated, fed back, over and over and over. So imagine a hand clap, and you would hear clap, 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 decaying over time. It's, a, it's an echo, essentially. There's lots of variations on this as an effect. You can add the original to the fed back signal and have gains on both the feedback path and the direct path to create a dry wet mix or you can just put a gain on any one of them because it's the variation between the two gains that create a dry wet mix you can send rather than the output of the delay to your, uh, a destination you can send the output of the feedback gain to an output or destination and you can have filtering in this path rather than just a game. So lots of different things can be done. But what we're showing here is one rather basic, simple structure that produces feedback delay. And how does it look? So we'll do something similar to what we did before. We will have a tone and oscillator, basically. But here, we're going to have that uh, burst of sound for the oscillator because we want to be able to tell when it stopped and then plays back again and back again each time at lower gain values. So we'll start off with our gain and delay values just as before or close to what was before. Here the gain is for the feedback delay. Uh, sorry, the, feed, the gain on the feedback path and the oscillator, we're going to call it tone. We start that tone. We put the tone into a gain node here because we want that oscillator sound to only last for a small amount of time. And we can do that by applying an envelope on this gain associated with the gain node. So initially the gain is zero. So it won't, will not produce any sound. We set the delay to here we have it at about 80 milliseconds and the feedback to 0 0.8. One needs to be careful with the feedback. If the feedback gain is greater than one, then the delayed signal will increase in amplitude. And so each copy gets louder and louder and it will quickly exceed the limits of how high an amplitude can be rendered. Uh, with the web audio API and with the output of loudspeakers associated with your device. So the tone is connected to the gain. This tone gain connects to the delay. The delay connects to the feedback. The feedback connects back to the delay and this delay connects to destination. These lines here are simply the connections within this audio graph. One can change the delay and one can change the feedback gain. The tone only lasts for 50 milliseconds and it ramps down linearly. <coughs> so we get a little burst of sound fed into this feedback loop. And let's see how this sounds. So hopefully you hear that okay. Let's try it again. Let's try increasing that gain. And it lasts a lot longer with higher gain. We do not let the gain exceed a value of one. And even if the gain is one, 
that's still unstable. That's on the edge where any small variation in that gain is enough to allow the signal to last for a very long time. So here it was again. Let's try increasing the delay. And decrease it. And that's it. That is feedback delay. So here I gave two short examples of uses of the delay node. And I expect in a later lecture, I will cover two more, the car plus strong algorithm and vibrato. But I think that's all for now. As always, please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. And thanks very much. Bye.